because he was letting us take some firewood off his land and noticed it in the fence line. He said, go ahead and take it. He's got another one that works better. We were happy to take him up on that offer. Getting this plow really kicked off the whole experience of preparing and planting in some land. You can check out that whole experience in this video at the top right of your screen. gotten through plowing or maybe just mutilating about a third of an acre and started to figure out some basic things. But I really ran into issues with the plow not sucking down enough for me. And when I pulled the plow share, this is probably why. This really is supposed to be a significantly longer point. Now, there was an old share hanging around the property that we're going to try to cut and weld on because it's very difficult to find a plow share for a case centennial plow, especially at a price point that I'm willing to put up with for an acre every three years. First point's done and I think I'm decently satisfied with it. Now I'm tracing out the second one and I think I've realized a bit of a problem. Uh, this one is obviously a lot older and it's about an inch and a half, two inches skinnier. All right, so I realize it might be really optimistic to hope that this will work. There are some issues with heat tempering too, which I can't do, but our soil is mostly soft, so we'll hope it'll work. We're gonna do a quick setup. We've gotta level it so that the front and back plow are digging at the same depth. That forward and backward angle will also help control how much it's going to suck under the ground now that I actually have some points on there. We'll also roll it over so that it's a little more level side to side. That way we don't get a washboardy bottom. And after I plow a little bit, I'll scrape off the dirt and just see how rippled it is. And you'll notice we're doing all these adjustments with the left rear wheel blocked six inches in the air, since it's going to be six inches higher sitting on the unplowed ground. But so what about the plow itself? Well, this was once a case centennial plow. It sat on a full undercarriage with a drawbar pull and had a lot more pieces on it than you see now. At some point, someone decided they preferred this setup and they just pulled off all the coulters and anything else they felt wasn't necessary and here's what we're left with. It's not ideal. Coulters are like huge pizza cutter wheels that sit right on the front in front of the plow right here and they slice through a lot of the detritus on the surface. I'm sure I could get them, modify them and put them on here, but that's a cost that I'm not really willing to put in. So we went ahead and tried it without them. Only in one section of the field where there was thick, tall grass from last year did I run into problems. But as it pulled that slice of ground up, instead of rolling smoothly off, it just got wedged up here under the beam and wadded everything up. It was irritating, and if I ran a lot of that, that would be a problem. But for most of our close crop sod, I really didn't notice any issues. With the Ford, we're going to run this in draft control mode while plowing. That means we pop this little lever down, See, in draft control mode, it's going to utilize feedback based on this spring, which is, of course, hooked to the top of the plow. Because as the ground changes and we start to get into dirt that's just too hard to pull for this tractor, I'm going to get a lot more resistance on the plow, pulling the bottom of the plow back. That rotates it around the frame, so we are pushing on my top link, pushing into that spring. That will activate it so that it starts to lift the plow a little bit. How deep I want to plow is still controlled a fair bit by this position control lever. And you'll notice that I'm adjusting this around quite a lot while I'm plowing, even though we're in draft control mode. At first, I thought that my draft control simply wasn't working. And maybe it's not working as well as it should. But when I flipped it off and tried to go just position control, I found out it was doing an awful lot for me that whole time. There was just a remarkable amount of variation within a several hundred feet of ground of each other, where the ground would get really soft, suck that plow way down and bring the tractor to a stop with the wheels spinning, or where I just couldn't get the plow to engage and dig more than four inches deep. Something isn't right, because when I pull my position lever full up at the end of a row, in draft control mode, the plow will come and just skim the surface, but it won't fully disengage. So at the end of the row, I'm just popping that draft control over to position control to get that full lift out of there. And this last point seems like it might be a controversial topic, but I did pull off my stabilizer bars. I did find it was nice to have the plow float side to side and that it seemed to track pretty well, no matter what the nose of the tractor was doing. It 
really push this tractor hard. And sometimes I felt like I was a little too much on it. Watching the sod just roll over off the back of that plow is very satisfying. Although I didn't end up getting to watch as much of it as I thought I would because there's a surprising amount of things drawing your focus elsewhere, including upcoming ground with position adjustments, trying to align yourself right, making sure you're not too far over. There were plenty of times when I started to row a little too far in one direction so the sod didn't cut fully and only half rolled. I'm sure I've got a long way to go till I can say I'm really proficient at it, but it didn't take too long before I felt that my results were at least above marginal. Now this certainly isn't quite an activity like hay raking where you just go out there and relax and ride around, but it actually wasn't that bad either. We've learned a lot over the last couple years working our mid-century hobby farm. We've grown, and so has our herd and flock. But we still try to affordably increase our self-reliance while ensuring we and the kids are having fun. Every day we find there is still more to learn. So subscribe to join us on the journey.